All right, let's get started on our lesson nine two day two um, work today. So we're going to continue with our trend line lesson, and so we need to find the trend line for this scatter plot. And again, just remember, trend line is if you drew a straight line through the middle of most of those points, then find the equation. Same way we used to find equations for linear functions, which is just a slope intercept form. Meaning we have to find the slope first, then we have to find the y intercept, and we put those two numbers here, and this is our equation. Now, sometimes instead of saying y, we might use some letter like p for pieces of fruit or f for fruit. Down here, instead of saying the x, instead of writing the letter x, we might use n for number of days or d for number of d days, right? But it's all the same stuff that we've done earlier this year. So let's review that. Um, but what's new is we have some scatter plots, and then we drew a line through the middle of those, and that's the only part that's new. The rest is the same. You can take two points to write the equation of a line. Here's a point. The coordinates are 0, 33. And this point right here, which is 1.5, 21. And if you don't like that, if you don't like the decimals, you can use this point right here. This is 3, 9. So you can avoid the decimals, avoid fractions. It's usually... A little bit easier if we do that, right? So we'll go ahead and use these two points then, but we could have used the other point. I'm going to get the same answer either way. And we got to get slope and y-intercept. To get slope, we subtract our two's y's. I'll go y minus y over x minus x. Watch your order, right? If I start on the left side on top, I got to start on the left side on the bottom too. So I have to go 0 minus 3, even if that means I get a negative there, right? So 33 take away 9. 33 take away 9. We'll just go ahead and subtract those two. Okay. Borrow if you need to. And it looks like we got a difference of, what, 24. And the quick way to do that in your head, right, if it's 33 take away 10, it would be 23, but we didn't quite take away 10, so we add one more on. That's how we get 24. Now, add the opposite here. 0 take away 3. There are more negatives and positives, so I get a slope of negative 8. Now, think about that. What do you think that slope means? Slope is a unit rate, right? So if you put y's on top, pieces of fruit, and x is on bottom, number of days, it looks like we're losing or maybe eating eight pieces of fruit a day. So, so that's what that means, eight pieces of fruit a day is being lost or taken away since it's a negative slope, right? And you can see it's a negative slope because it's going downhill left to right, isn't it? Now, we're done because the y-intercept, we can see it right there, it's 33. If you want to take one of these two points and plug it in, y equals mx plus b, you're going to get 33 either way. But when they give you a shortcut, I want you guys to use it. So you can write y equals the slope x plus the y-intercept where this line hits the y-axis, and that's it. And let's see, uh, if we looked at our answers, let's see if they use y and x or different letters. And it looks like they used f for y because fruit is on the y-axis. And it looks like they used d for x because days are on the x-axis. But it's the same as this equation right down here. It's the same thing. Now, question. Would it be the same if the D was over here? Could I say D equals negative 8 F plus 33? What do you guys think about that? Think about that to yourself real quick. And the answer would be no. This is not the same. Now, we could write a function where D is isolated, but it wouldn't be the same equation. So whatever whatever's on the y-axis has to go with the y-axis. This one would be wrong this time. All right, let's go ahead and continue with our new material. We are writing equations for trend lines. You guys remember another name for trend line? Line of best fit, correct? So let me go ahead and switch my color here. All right, so we have, uh, we're going to find the trend line here, and we're going to take Two points on this line. So we got a scatter plot. We got a line going through the middle. I see 0, 0, and I see the coordinates. Is this 5, 100, or 105? What do you guys think? Well, you go side to side first. It's 100, then 5. So the two points are 0, 0, and 100 is my x, not 5. So it's 105, not 5, 100. Now, to get the slope, 
And you could use your graph, couldn't you? You can go rise five, run 100 to get your slope. Or you can do the, the traditional, the regular. We can go y minus y over x minus x. And if you wanted to try to avoid negatives and do the second point first, you could go y minus y. But remember, if you start on your right side over here first, you got to start on your right side on the bottom also first even if it ends up becoming negative. But you can see from the line it's positive slope because it's going uphill left to right. So no matter how you do it, you're going to get 5 over 100, but we always simplify our fractions, right? 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 120 times. So 1 20th is our slope. Now, I see that this goes through the origin right here. It goes through the origin. So my y-intercept is 0, so my equation has to be, okay, try to try to think about it before I show it to you. What do you think the equation is? Pause the video real quick. And did you say d equals 5 hundredths h? Let's see. If you didn't, were you wrong? Let's find out. If my equation is y equals my slope x plus b, and my b is 0, or I see it's proportional, it goes to the origin, I don't need to write the plus b part. Is that the same as this? Well, 1 over 20, guess what 1 over 20 means? We know all fractions are what kind of problems? Division problems. So 1 over 20 means 1 divided by 20. 1 divided by 20 is 5 hundredths. And what's on the y-axis is d, so this is the same as y. What's on the x-axis is h, so this is the same. So actually, these are the same equations. So let's say we were taking a test and we got this and we didn't see this. We saw D's and H's. I would just kind of rationalize the D's on the Y axis. So it has to go there. This is, I can convert that. I can even use a calculator and divide it. And that has to be X. So I could pick the right answer. All right. And I believe this is our last trend line or line of best fit problem. It looks like we're finding the equation again. I want you guys to pause the video now and do this on your own. So let's see how you guys did. So it looks like we have a point here at 0, 180. And a point up here at like 5, 390. You guys see where I'm getting a 390 from? Right? These are counting by 30s, every one of these. So if I went up from 360 one more, that'd be 390. All right, so I got to get the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is going to be, and I'll start on the right. This is the right side. This is the left side. I'll go right minus left to try to avoid negatives. But on the bottom, I'll go right minus left, even if it is negatives. I got to keep the same order. But I could see it's positive because it's going uphill left to right. I subtract these two. What do I get there? It looks like about 210. And 5 take away nothing is 5. And then 210, yes, you can use your calculators, divided by 5. Plug that in there. And it looks like we get a slope of about 42. Now I'm saying about 42, right? Because this is a trend line. Not all the points lie perfectly on there. So what does a 42 mean? Well, we don't have any um, any um, units of measure over here or here. So it's just regular old abstract concept of 42, of, of rising, of changing 42 as you run one. But anyways, uh, we're actually done. Because you guys, if you look, you can see where it hits the y-axis, right? We don't have to take a point. We have to take one of those points and plug it into y equals mx plus b and solve for b. I can see the b is right there. So my equation is done. It is y equals 42x plus 180. All right. So now we're going to start a review section for our quiz next week. We're going to simplify this. Pause the video now. So this is quotient of powers because all fractions are division problems. Quotient means answer to a division problem. So I copy the base, the big numbers, and subtract the other exponents, the little numbers. I go top, minus, and you see that's a negative. So this is one of those problems where you have to write two negatives in a row. Most of you would do this. If you did it wrong, most of you would write this way if you did it correctly, right? But that's a negative 2 down there, so you got to write that. This is not right. This is right. I do add the opposite, and my answer is simply n to the 6. You guys pause the video now and try this one. Solving two-step equations, anytime you guys have 
Let me separate my left from my right side of the equations. Anytime you have any type of fractions, just make everything a fraction, right? So I can make this a fraction by multiplying. 5 times 10 is 50. And then add 1, I got 51. And keep the same bottom number. Same denominators. 51 50 is the exact same number as 10 and 1 fifth. Over here, negative 9 fifths is already a fraction. But 2 and 2 thirds isn't. So convert 2 and 2 thirds. Hopefully when you did that, you got 3 times 2 is 6. Plus 2 is 8. Hopefully you got 8 thirds. And our variable is V this time. It's not always X, right? So how do I solve this? Well, solve means to isolate the variable, get it to where it says V, and then you're done. So we got to move the negative 9 fifths and the 8 thirds. We work farthest away from the variable first, doing inverse operations. The opposite of negative 9 fifths is to add 9 fifths. I do the exact same thing to both sides because that's what keeps it equal if you do the same thing to both sides. This cancels out. I get 8 thirds V. And I can add these fractions because I have same size pieces or common denominator. The size that they are are fifths, so I don't add those two. That would change the size. But I do add how many of those fifths I have. I have 51 plus 9 more. Well, if it was 51 plus 10 more, it would be 61. But it wasn't quite 10 more, so I would just, instead of saying 61, I would just say 60, right? And, of course, you can go out to the side and go 51 plus 9 at that mental math. Even if I were taking a test, I'd check it anyways, right? All right, so how do I get rid of a fraction? When I got a fraction as a coefficient, I simply multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Or I use what's called the multiplicative inverse, meaning the number you multiply to get a 1. And why do we want to get a 1? Because 1 times v is v, and that's my goal, to make it just say v, or isolate the variable. And flipping something upside down and multiplying to the, it makes it go away. It makes it a 1. 1v one is v. But now we have to go over here. And this is where we are multiplying two fractions together. How do we multiply fractions? We prime factorize first. 60 is 6. That's 2 times 3 times 10. 10 is 2 times 5. So prime factorizing is really quick, actually. Cross out all of our 1s. 2 over 2 is 1. Can't cross out those 3 because they're both on top. If something's on top and bottom, you can cross those out. I can cross those fives. I can hit those twos. So what's left on top is 3 times 3 or 9. And on the bottom is 2. This is a reduced answer. It may not be converted to a mixed number, but it is reduced. Sometimes they want us to convert to a mixed number. So if I don't see my answer, I just divide. I go in and out. And my remainder goes up top, divisor goes on the bottom, and it's the same number. You guys pause the video and try this multi-step equation. So when we're solving multi-step equations, our mantra is simplify both sides, get your variables on one side, and then isolate, right? So we'll separate our left from our right side. I do my rule for subtraction, add the opposite. And even though I have negatives, there's no other subtraction problems here, right? It's okay to have negatives in front. As long as I have a plus sign in the middle of everything, I'm good to go. All right, so simplify. How do I simplify? I distribute and combine like terms. So I'm going to distribute first. Left side is already simplified. I got negative 7n plus 34 equals negative 5 times n is negative 5n. And this is the part you can't forget, right? I can put plus in the middle of everything, right? Because I did rule for subtraction. Plus what? Negative 5 times negative 8. That's 40. Notice I didn't write negative 8 down here, did I? I have to distribute that negative 5 or multiply it to everything, so to speak. So let's go ahead and uh, now that both sides are simplified, to get a variable on one side. So I'll take the opposite of negative 7n and I add 7n. Notice on step 2, getting our variables on both sides, we're not dividing yet. We're adding and we're taking the letter with us. We're trying to get our letter on the same side. How can you isolate a variable if you got variables all over the place, right? Once I have one variable like this, this is now a two-step equation like the last one we did. This is where we work farthest away from the variable. Do inverse operations. And if I have positive 34 and negative 40, well, those are opposite teams, right? Positive 34 and negative 40, opposite teams mean subtract. There's a difference of 6. Negatives have more, so I have negative 6 left on this side. Divide both sides by the coefficient, the number in front of the variable. Positive divided by negative is negative, and hopefully you guys got a negative 3. I want you guys to pause the video and try this next problem.
So we're solving the system. We're going to use a substitution method. That was our focus in eighth grade, right? We just focus on substitution. And so we have to isolate one of the variables. And then we can take that and plug it into the other or substitute it into the other one where that variable goes. So I'm going to rewrite the other equation. But wherever there's a y, since it says y equals, I can put this stuff instead of y. So I'm going to substitute that y with this stuff up here. So I'm going to put uh, usually in parentheses, correct? Usually in parentheses, because I, I usually have to distribute, even if there's a minus sign, I distribute. But there's no coefficient this time, so I don't really need the parentheses. Let me rewrite down here. Sorry about that. So I got 5x plus, put this part in, 5x plus 3. And don't forget to write the rest, equals 8. Okay, so I rewrote this equation, but instead of putting y, I put this stuff, and I want to put it in parentheses, because sometimes when there's a number in front of the y, we have to distribute. So we're going to solve this equation now. Simplify both sides. Distribute first. There's nothing to distribute because there's no coefficient. There's no number right in front. This is not in front. It's separated with the plus sign. So I can't distribute. Now combine like terms. I have negative 5x plus 5x. Those are opposites. Those cross out. Now, we can't go on. We can't get our variables on one side or isolate the variable because there are no variables. So this is a special case. So either this is... Uh, these are guys of the same line, which means there's infinitely many solutions, or they're parallel lines, which means there's no solution. And since this is not a true statement, we know that this is a no solution equation or a system. That means these lines won't intersect. Pause the video. Try this problem now. Writing the equation for a line, we got to get the slope and the y intercept. So I take my two points. And I go y minus y over x minus x. Watch this part here. x minus, there's another negative. So don't forget that other negative. Sometimes we have to write two negatives. Sometimes we don't. How do I know? Well, there's another negative. I write it. So do you add the opposite? These guys are on the same team, so I add them together. Add the opposite. 0 plus 5 is 5. My slope is this. Now look, you guys can stop there. They give us the y-intercept, don't they? Don't they? When the x is 0, you know the y-intercept. But now, you might get a problem on the quiz where they don't. So let's finish this. So I would pick the easier one, but just for argument's sake, I'll pick the harder one this time. Easier is when there's zeros, right? Small numbers. Okay, but they're both going to work, so I'll show you. So we already know the y-intercept's negative 4. We know the equation should be y equals slope, negative 6 fifths x, plus y-intercept, negative 4. Okay, but how would we do that if they didn't tell us the y-intercept? with a graph or by giving us a zero for x, then I take one point, it doesn't matter which point, and the slope that I found, and I plug it into y equals mx plus b. And next year in algebra, your teacher, algebra teacher will teach you point slope form. But for now, we'll just focus on just learning one fancy equation. So I'll put the y in here. The slope goes here. The x goes here. And plus b, we're going to figure out what b is or the y-intercept, even though we know it's negative 4, okay? Dealing with fractions, make everything a fraction. Separate your left your right, uh, separate your left from your right side. Cross out your 1s. Negative times negative is positive. Isolate the variable by doing inverse operations. Opposite teens mean subtract. We have more negatives, and you can see we get our negative 4 that way also. You guys, pause, uh, pause the video, read this question, and try it on your own first. So poles are usually perpendicular to your ground. So they say we got a 17-foot pole. They say that it is uh, 3 feet from the base. Uh, excuse me, 13 feet from the base. There's a point, and then there's a string connecting those two. In other words, we have a right triangle. This is Pythagorean theorem. We go 17 squared plus 13 squared equals C squared. And we can break out our calculators and go 17 times 17 which is 289. And if you knew that already, that's fine. You just write 289. Like if you know 13 squared is 169, that's fine. Otherwise, you'd get your calculator. You go 13 times 13, you get 169. Add these two together. Now you already got one of them in your calculator, so just hit plus and add the other. 
and we get 458. Now that's what c squared is. If we want to know the distance of this, this string, the line, right now we know what this square is, right? The area of this square. We want to know just the line. We take the square root of it. So how do we make c squared c? We take the square root of both sides. Square root of c squared of c. What's the square root of 458? We already, again, we already got it in our calculator, right? We just hit the square root button. We see that it's an irrational number. And so we could estimate, but not this time because they say what? If they want exact, we have to write our answer this way. We're at 458 feet. You guys pause the video for our last problem and try it on your own. All right, nine over three plus seven equals 11. Sorry about that. Separate both sides. Work farthest away from the variable first, right? We don't need to simplify both sides and get variables on one side. That stuff's already done for us. So I have some number over three equals, I subtracted seven from both sides, four. Now, what do I do when the variable's on top? Well, this is a division problem. Fractions are division problems. So the opposite of divide by three is to multiply by three. So I multiply by three, that crosses out my ones, and I get my answer of 12. All right, so I hope that helped you guys out. We will see you guys soon.